Welcome back to another episode of Thrive Mode Radio. I'm your host, Marks Mackay. I appreciate your attention. I appreciate uh, your ears. I know it could be anywhere in the world. Uh, and so today, I don't bring many guests on, uh, but when I see someone who, and I know someone who can bring a ton of value and has a wicked set of marbles, I'm going to bring them in. So uh, we have Eric Back, who runs Back Performance on the show today. So welcome, buddy. Hey, thank you for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. Yeah, appreciate it. So, you know, in the training world, you know, real recognize real. There's so many people who don't know their shit and, and unfortunately got themselves in shape and said, hey, I can get a lot of other people in shape, but don't really have the skills to. You can get yourself in shape. The real coaches can get anybody who walks in the room. You should be able to get in shape. So I'm really excited to have him on, um, especially because both of our brains are in the same space. Uh, so let's talk about what performance means to you. Why do we want to perform each day and feel our best? What does that mean? Yeah, listen, you want to look great naked, but you want to be able to enjoy every other aspect of your life as well. So that means if you want to be able to go join a pickup basketball game, you can do so. You can run down the court, you can hit a jumper, and you can get right back into what you're doing. Or you can chase your kids around and not have to worry about pulling a hamstring. There are so many coaches out there that solely focus on, on vanity and, and looking great, which is important. But ultimately, if you want to build a body, if you want to have a lifestyle that allows you to enjoy the fruits of your labor, what you see in the mirror is only going to take you so far. And granted, it can take you pretty far. But ultimately, what you're going to want to do is be able to enjoy that body, enjoy those experiences. So being able to perform as well as looking great is, is absolutely crucial. And that's exactly what we do. Yeah, that's awesome, man. So what's... um. What's your training philosophy? Like if you have a, a client that comes into your world who hasn't been active, uh, has some weight to lose and maybe lacks mobility, like what, what are the, the few things you really look at to make sure that they transform quickly? Yeah. So the first thing I do is simplify yeah. success. Success comes from the ruthless execution of the basics, right? And in the fitness industry, there's so much complicated information out there. And as you alluded, there are so many trainers that don't know their elbow from their asshole. And as a result, <laughs> I, try to I love it. They try to make everything fancy, everything nice, just to get likes, just to get all these different aspects and these vanity metrics on social media. And they look intriguing. Yeah. And their position, the copywriting around them is great. But are they actually real? Mm, do they really deliver what you think? Most times they don't. So the first thing I do is I simplify everything for my clients across the board. Because when things are simple, then they can execute. And particularly if you have a hard charging man with many different things going on in his life, Chances are he's pulled in 85 different directions the way it is. So if we can simplify, simplify things for him, that's going to be incredibly important. A couple of the basics that we focus on right off the bat, and these are going to seem very simple. Three to four liters of water per day. A 15-minute walk in the morning when you wake up to set your circadian rhythm. A 15-minute walk in the evening to decompress, maybe with your lady, maybe with your family, and to aid in digestion getting those two basic components in. And then we start to stack workouts directly on top of those. And those workouts... 45 minutes long, 80% compound exercises, simply focusing on moving your body much in the way that it is designed to move in real life. And with those components there, by eliminating the noise and focusing on you know, the 80-20 Pareto's principle applied to training, you're going to make huge headways directly with looking better, feeling better, and performing your best. Yeah, I love it, man. And just to for people who are listening and who save Instagram workouts and who see, who are enticed by a new movement, but definitely don't know how to execute it because an Instagram influencer put it up just to get likes. I, hey, we've both done it. We yeah. know that when we post reels with our tarps off and we start with like a flashy movement, it's going to get more engagement. And that's just marketing. Okay. So, uh, but the reality is, is you need to own the basics. You need to do the ordinary things extraordinarily well. In, in anything yeah. you do. Yeah, that's really it. And you know, some of the best advice I got from one of my previous mentors, Lauren Landau is now the strength coach of the, of the uh, Denver Broncos was there's what you feel. And then there's what's real, right? Like mm -hmm. you can drop down right now and you can do a hundred burpees. That shit is hard. Yeah. But just because your legs are burning because your calves are burning because your chest is burning from pushing yourself back up just because you feel that it doesn't mean that that's creating the physiological response that you think it is. Yeah. And a lot of times people go for this, this feel or like this look of something and all of a sudden, yeah, you're working really hard, but your training is misaligned with the actual response that you want. So you're not really experiencing the fruits of your labor. And as a result, you get really frustrated. You're working hard, but you're just not getting the payoff that you want. And simplicity is often the answer. Yeah, for sure. And, and anybody can make anybody sweat. Yeah, we talked about burpees. Like you do a minute of burpees, you're sweating. You tell someone to run two kilometers and most humans can't, which sucks. 
Uh, we got a lot of work to do, brother. Uh, <laughs> now we now, do. Yeah, but training, it has purpose. It has intent. You've heard me say this before. Is there's, don't just work out, train. Like when you show up, train. I, there's intent. There's focus. It's fun because you're getting better. You know you're training for something. Um, but I want to pivot back to something you said and, and I love is like permissionless. Like your body is, you don't have to ask it permission to go play ball right? To, to go play with your kids and stuff like that. And I think that's such a liberating feel feeling that you're free. Right. Um, yeah. so yeah, I, you come from an athletic background, obviously I want you to talk more about that. Yeah, definitely. You know, and I'll even talk about something more immediately relevant, you know, right now. And I think a lot of your listeners can understand this is, um, I'm 33, you know, I've got a, I've got a daughter's almost two and I'm at this age now where I see a lot of my friends who haven't been active slowing down. Mm-hmm. Right. And, on one hand, it's been really interesting because my daughter at this age emulates everything that I do. It, it's crazy. Monkey see, monkey do. And I was much yeah. the same way as a kid. And fortunately, I had an active family. But it got me thinking quite a bit with my own clients. So like, how often are we doing things consciously or subconsciously that we don't necessarily want to pass on? Or, you know, when those around us see us and we're not able to perform in a certain way, what is that ingraining with them? That mm-hmm. when you get to a certain age, that this is acceptable or that you should just sit on the couch when you're done with the day. And a lot of the roots of this and being able to, you know, look, feel, and perform come back to performance because, you know, originally really when strength training came along, it wasn't just done for vanity, right? We had guys like Arnold. He was also competing in in competitive weightlifting. Yeah. Right. Right. So you have these guys who are, who are, you know, one, they looked incredible, but they were also looking to perform in a certain way. And many times people chase some of the vanity driven aspects, which again are great, but they exclude being able to perform. And so what can help a lot of, a lot of guys, especially is instead of just focusing on the aesthetic component, tying a performance related goal. So it could be something like, Hey, I want to be able to hit 12 pull-ups. I want to be able to, you know, run a 100 meter dash in X, Y, and Z amount of time without pulling a hamstring. I want to be able to train maybe a box jumper. I want to be able to, you know, still touch rim, whatever it is. Tying any of these performance-based goals where you have to focus on maybe moving your body through space or optimizing a particular movement allows you to focus on developing the skill itself. Because like anything else, right? Like you can relate to this, Marcus. Whenever you're fully immersed in a skill, when you're in flow, is that not the best feeling that you ever have? And whether it's business, whether it's, business, whether it's you know, a relationship, whatever, whatever that, that moment, that you can take, that's when all the magic happens. So if you can take that same idea, that same principle and apply it to your training, not only will you develop these skills, but you're going to bring your physique along for the ride as well. Yeah, I love that, man. State, state control is crazy. Uh, and the other thing is, is don't go to the gym for fat loss, right? Like use your fork, use your lifestyle, you know, like go to the gym to get fucking better. Like, yeah, be strong, be capable. That's where you get, unfortunately, that society, it is what it is that we have to create these man-made gyms uh, to go get stronger it used to just be the environment made us strong so go sharpen the saw get strong get capable and then if you want to pull down your body fat use nutrition if you want to increase your lean muscle mass probably push up your nutrition maybe change training volume a little bit but um, i love where your your head's at is is just that flow state i do you have a like a, a mantra or like you know, something that you do before every session to, to create that space? Yeah, so I thought this was really interesting. I'm flashing back to my performance days when you used to do NFL combine training and stuff like that. And what's really interesting at this particular facility that I worked at is every single person went through the same warm-up. Mm. Kind of crazy, right? You would think, we've got an Olympic-level swimmer here. We've got 10 NFL athletes here. We've got a 50-year-old businessman here. We've got a 45-year-old woman here. Well, most people have the same gaps, the same issues, glute activation, thoracic mobility, trunk stability, right? We all have, we all have shitty posture and flat asses. Like, let's be real. That's what it yeah. is because we sit like this all day, right? Like, it's like yeah. Swagimoto. So if we can focus on that. having, if we can focus on having like a consistent way to warm up where we attack those common points, when we can start to automate certain things that we do where we get dialed in. And as soon as we start these particular sets of movements, then we know it's game time. Mm-hmm. That's when the switch hits. Because if you have to think about something actually too much when you're going through it, people overcomplicate it. Like personally, I'm like, again, I'm, I'm a huge sports fanatic, right? And you hear about this all the time. Young guys, oh, he's got all the skill in the world, but he's overcomplicating. You can tell he's thinking out there instead of reading reactive. 
That's an example of somebody who's overthinking it and not in flow. So what we want to be able to do, and one thing that helps me, it helps all my athletes is we put people through a very simple, straightforward warm-up. And this simple, straightforward warm-up focuses on key areas that almost everybody struggles with. And when you start that warm-up, you go through those same exercises. One, you do them incredibly well because you do them consistently. And two, when you start, you know this is when it's time to turn that switch. You can block out all the other noise, all the bullshit from work, everything else is going on, and now it's time to get better. Mm, I like that. Yeah, I, I think that's key. And, and we do a similar thing with, with our clients is, you know, we start with, with them with thoracic mobility and, and spine articulation. So it's like cat camel, which is for people who don't know what that is, just rounding and, and bending up the spine and getting their breathing and bracing going. Because if you want to contract muscles, it, it, your breathing is everything. Your diaphragm is the, the center of that. And then get yeah. them into some sort of yoga flow, right? And, and again, when they go into their A block, they're ready to go. Their brain's on. That's exactly it. Yeah. I mean, if you can systemize some of those things and and streamline focus, everything else falls into place. Yeah. Cause think about how many times you go to the gym, you don't want to do it. You don't, you really don't. I, I do that. I wouldn't say often. There's probably like three to five days per month. And I'm like, Oh, today, but I just go to my routine. Cause I don't, I just, I don't have to think if there's a playlist, there's mobility sequence. I know exactly what exercise I'm going to push that day. I just show up. Exactly. And you know what? I think a lot of people approach work the same way. You know what? Oh man, I don't want to work today. It's Tuesday. Well, you know what? Professional. So we show up and we get the job done. Mm-hmm. And that same mindset should be applied directly to your training. You're not always going to want to be there. You're not always going to want to get that workout done. But when you are done, you're going to be really thankful that you did it. And those days when you don't want to show up quite as much, you don't want to push quite as much, but you do that's when you eliminate the need for motivation. That's when you lock in consistency. That's when you lock in your focus. And that's when you start to love the process, the process itself. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Discipline is, is way less heavy than disappointment, right? It really is. It's a great yeah. thing. Yeah, for sure. So we all know, and, and this is new, right? Recovery, um, helping people do the training and then how do they manage life relationships their training and make sure that their body is recovering at the highest level because nobody knows about this shit. So what are some best practices? Uh, of course, you're going to talk about sleep, but what are some, do you have some tricks uh, that you use with your high level athletes that, that really gets them uh, recovered quickly? Yeah. So like first is just like a, a mindset shift around stress. And the first thing that we have to understand is if we are not proactively reducing stress, we are actively getting more stress because it's coming oh. from every different angle that we can, that we can possibly think. Mm-hmm. So decision not to do something is actually making the decision to let that take control of your life a little bit more. So the biggest things, meditation is huge. I say five minutes of meditation, right? When you wake up for most people, if they're hard charging, it's going to be, you have to do it when you wake up or you're not going to do it at all. Right. So that's like setting that anchor and that trigger point. Um, and on top of that, after a workout, take five minutes and do some deep diaphragmatic breathing. So okay lay down on the floor, get your legs elevated, close your eyes, focus on breathing in through your nose. I always say like, put your hands just outside your belly button, just feel your stomach rise and come back down. And what that's going to do is help just calm down your nervous system, give yourself a little transition between charging hard during a workout and then getting next, getting ready for that next phase of your day, whatever that could be. Yeah. Yeah. Simple. Right. And both those practices were oh, actually three of them, right? Mindset and then two breathing practices. Exactly. And I mean, yeah. they're so they're so intertwined across the board, too. Yeah, it's one and the same. I think a lot of people struggle with meditation because they just think that meditation is, a, is like a, this airy fairy state of being that is so hard to get to. Like just sitting there and trying to be calm and, and grateful in the moment is like it takes two minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like I, I do a five minute meditation on my calm app. I literally I yeah. wake up, go to the bathroom, drink my water and I sit on the floor right next to the toilet for five oh, minutes. Really? Exactly. Like I've just got to get it done then. Um, and like you're mentioning, right. A lot of people beat themselves up because they're thinking, I keep thinking, or I keep doing this, or I'm not good at it. You're not supposed to be good at it. Yeah. Right. The point is to, to sit in the challenge and be okay with it. And, and that's the beauty of it. And I, I didn't start getting really consistent and, and, and good at meditation and unwinding until I just accepted that fact for what it is. And mm. just focus on the process itself and let the results come or not. But the process itself is what matters. Yeah, exactly. I, when I was, um, I started having some really bad panic attacks 
my early 20s um, and depression that followed uh, due to poor lifestyle from athlete to pretty much, you know, drug and alcohol addict. Um, and so I, that was introduced to me, like, imagine a university kid at the age of 21, 22, meditating all his friends, like this was like 12 years ago, right? Yeah, people didn't know. And so when I started doing it, it was really, I was in so much pain, like the anxiety was so bad, that I needed to have a way to, to own my, my thoughts, that I can't control them, but I can own them. And that's a huge distinction that when thoughts come into your brain, you have the opportunity to react to them or just let them go like the river. And if you can let them go like the river, your quality of life goes up, your stress goes down. And that's the idea of just doing the, the thing you got to do every single day. For some people, their number one self-care habit is breathing for five minutes each morning. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really, it sounds so simple. Yeah. And it is. But it doesn't have to be like, I would say I live in North Vancouver, I have beautiful mountains. Going out at 5 p.m. every single day, I go for a walk or a hike with my dog in the mountains. That's meditative. I have no phone. I have no nothing. That's meditative. Because what we talked about, your, your, your nervous system, you have parasympathetic, sorry, parasympathetic activities. Those are designed to calm you down. I know it's counterintuitive, but then you have sympathetic drivers. That's when we train. You want to be the warrior. So you want to be, in my last episode, I talked about the monk and the warrior. 22 hours a day, be the monk. Be calm. Be collected. Be on point. Two hours of the day, turn on for your training, maybe for your important meetings, whatever it is. That's awesome, man. Um, it's funny that you hear the top-level athletes, even in the NFL, are doing the same things that you can do. It's crazy. And you know what? You know who struggles with all the basic things like sleep, hydration, meditation, headspace, high-level athletes. Yeah. So you're not alone in those struggles. And it really comes down to who can nail those basic foundation, foundational pieces the best. Because once, you know, the bigger those foundational building blocks are, the higher we can stack every other variable every other level of performance that we want to be able to get. So we got to make sure that that foundation is sturdy itself. Otherwise we're building on a, on a faulty base, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, man, this has been, uh, I learned, um, and I, I think I'll, I'll want to have you back on the show and we'll get some great feedback. So I just want to say, I appreciate your, um, your time. Uh, if this show is valuable for you as a listener, if you give us a, a five-star rating and share it with one meaningful person, that'd be great. But Eric, thanks so much for your time. Uh, this was incredible. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was a great time. Um, I look forward to being back. That baby. <laughs>